And in just a few minutes, Nadine will be sharing her expertise on the subject of using games as a learning tool for early childhood development, and also sharing games she's developed for elementary school age children. So we're looking forward to that. Now we'll leave this slide up here just for a minute in case anyone's having audio issues. Hopefully everyone is seeing and hearing. Um, and also we'll just take this moment to cover just a few general webinar details. We have a fantastic turnout today, so we are going to have everyone muted, so that will allow any conversations or background activities to be kept private. So please make use of the question panel in the lower right-hand window of your GoToWebinar um, control panel box. So we'll be watching that during the webinar and doing our best to answer your questions. Also, we'll have a question and answer session at the conclusion. And if we don't get to your question, we'll be gathering up all your questions and making a document with your questions and our responses and making that available for you. So if we don't get to your question, the response is coming, don't worry. And the webinar, of course, will be recorded uh, for you to share with your colleagues later or for your own review. So again, on behalf of John Avini, Dean, and myself, welcome to our Game Shows webinar. Thank you, Jamaica, uh, for the introductions. Hello, everyone. This is Janavi again, and I'm really excited uh, to have you all join us today for this uh, about in this webinar. So, um, with, without much ado, uh, let's let's get started. Um, and what we will not actually, Jamaica and I will for this uh, for the next few minutes. What we will not uh, focus on is, you know, let's just assume for. Uh, the first few minutes that we, what we already know about games, the, the benefits that are listed here, we all agree with them, we all uh, love games and think they could make an effective learning tool and that's why we're all here, like for example, um, you know, they provide an environment for competition and cooperation. Main thing is it doesn't feel like work, it feels like play and you're still learning. There's an element of uh, achievement and last but not least, uh, it uh, it fosters, you know, it enables you to keep going at it, the persistence aspect of uh, which I think is a precondition for effective learning. You know, it makes you want to outdo your own score, it makes you better your own score uh, or beat somebody else's score. And that persistence, I think, um, the persistence is, is definitely a precondition to learning. So let's just assume for, for now that we all agree uh, and use that as a premise. Uh, we will get into why games are important and relevant to learning, but we'll defer that till a little bit later uh, and defer it to Nadine, who our expert here, who will share some of her thoughts on that. So with that, let's dive right into our games uh, and ra do a curtain raiser here. Let the show begin with games. So um, the first game we have to share with you today is the Mind the Gold game from Reptivity Evolve. Uh, and just for those of you who are not familiar with Raptivity Evolve, um, just wanted to share a little bit of information. It's a new initiative that Raptivity has launched where we'll be re releasing one interaction every few weeks, uh, four to six weeks roughly. And the nice thing is these interactions will be complementary for our premium customers, meaning all customers on an active support plan will be entitled to these free. Uh, so, so far we have three already. Uh, before Mind the Gold, we've already released Rapid Check Interaction. It's a fun little exercise, uh, one of my favorite activities, and also the Mind Map Interaction. So if you are one of the customers on an active support plan, um, please be sure to write to us and avail these uh, interactions. Also, last but not least, Evolve is a collaborative effort, so we encourage customers uh, users to give us inputs uh, and pers but inputs on what games they would like to see or what uh, interactions in general they would like to see in Raptivity and we'll see, we'll evaluate them and uh, see if we can make them a part of uh, Raptivity Evolve. Um, and of course you can participate through the community with us. So um, that was about Evolve. 
going back to the game that we are talking about, Mine the Gold from Raptivity Evolve, we just released that two weeks ago and uh, we're really excited. It is part of the, the third interaction in Raptivity Evolve pack and the 36th Raptivity game-based interaction. So Raptivity has over 180 interactions, but uh, this is uh, the 36th game interaction. And it is, I must say, uh, one, of the, one of my favorite game interactions. Uh, it is an assessment-based game, meaning you have to answer questions correctly to claim your treasure. And what I like about it is it has this element of challenge, so you can actually set timers and you have to grab as many, make sure you collect as many gold nuggets as you can or diamonds in the mine um, before the timer runs out. And not, so that's one challenge, but there's also the other challenge, which uh, you, it's dexterity, and you'll soon see what I mean by that when Jamaica shows some uh, examples. Uh, and of course, what I like is there's levels of complexity in this game. So you have three levels of complexity plus uh, actually four, I should say. And and then there's an element of winning. So it's not just the points, um, you know, the the score that you get, but there's also uh, achievable goals. So it tells you the total achievable points is say 100 and so you know what your goal is to pass and so on. So it's a really nice game. Rather than talk about it, why don't we dive right into it and over to Jamaica for that. Oh, fantastic. Thank you, Jonavi, for that introduction to the game. So let's go ahead and play an example here. You can see it's been started. So you can see we have our uh, gold nuggets that we're going for, the diamonds that we're going for the rocks that we want to avoid. So we'll just use the down arrow on the keyboard and that controls. So we reach and hopefully we'll get a, this is showing what John of you was talking about, then dexterity here, so. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> this I think you're going for the big okay. one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the question pops up. We have some options. So we'll choose the one that we think is right. And let's go ahead and choose the second option there, so we'll submit. And maybe and our audience can help us, Jamaica, right? Oh, yeah, if you have some. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So you can see we got it. So a couple things to point out while we're reaching for the next nugget is along the top, you'll notice that there is a score and a goal. And we'll go ahead and answer our next question. Excellent. So we're getting some more points. So notice in the upper left, we have a goal, and then we have our score and then we have the, the different size nuggets plus the diamonds that we've gotten. And each of those can be, have a different point value, so a different point system. There can also be a timer. Notice and this in the is upper a right game, corner. Right, and this is a game for uh, probably children, right? It's uh, children's li based on children's literature. Yeah, I would say this context is more for a younger, younger audience. So another question here. And you'll see, we'll share another example with you that this definitely isn't limited to just younger age, but this particular topic is more for the, I would say, K through 12, I'd agree. Oh, that was a big rock. <laughs> <laughs> You're just clearing it there for the, clearing it there for the diamond, or for the gold. Just the wrong kind of rock, right? <laughs> yeah, wrong kind. All right, so let's give another let's one just a just maybe one more? Sure. Okay, so I think everyone would agree that that would be Alice in Wonderland, so we'll submit. All right, so let's take a look at um, maybe the same game, the Mind the Gold, but looking at it more in a different type of setting. So as Jonavi said, this one would definitely maybe be more for a K through 12 audience. Our time is just about up here, so you see we get some final feedback. So it tells us the time, the score, if we passed or not. You can also check your answers versus the correct answers. So you can scroll through here. So let's go ahead and look at another example. And I see some questions coming in about um, if we can put harder questions and so on. Um, and as far as the the rocks that you mentioned, I think that you're speaking about the, not the gold, but the actual rocks, and that's part of the challenge of the game. It just adds that level of dexterity, trying to reach 
the actual gold and the diamonds. But you can definitely adjust the level of question or the hardness of them in the nuggets. And you'll see that in this one. So this one is a CPR knowledge quiz. So maybe in a healthcare environment, an emergency response system, or maybe just even internally, you have some internal safety training that you require everyone to go through. So let's go ahead and start this one. And we'll see the, the game is the same idea, but the questions will be quite different based for a different audience. So this one's a little more challenging here with all those wrong kind of rocks at the top. This looks like a good one. All right, so the proper way to determine unresponsiveness. I am going to say that it's that last option. And again, you'll notice here, um, as compared to the first example, the game is set up the same, but the look and feel of it is, is different. So when you are answering your questions, the coloring, all of that can match your corporate environment or questions. I think I know so this answer, good, Jamaica. Yeah, OK. <laughs> go for it. All more, right, let's go ahead and submit that one. Perfect. And again, you'll notice that the, the score is changing. We have our goal. It's also visually showing us the questions that we've answered, if we've gotten the harder ones or the not hard ones. Check for breathing. Yep, I think it's that third one also. All right, so we'll do a few more here. Again, just okay. lots of different ways that this type of game could be utilized. I know for right. sure the second one's not it. <laughs> <laughs> not the second one. Okay. Maybe the fourth one there. All right, and just a few more questions here so you can see the game will either end when the time runs out or when you have answered all the questions. So that's when that dexterity comes in to try to get all of your questions in before the time runs out. So maybe we can move uh, to after this one. Oh to the next. Uh, <laughs> okay, what a way to end. I think everybody got the idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we can uh, move on. Oh. So I think uh, that those were some good examples you shared with us, uh, Jamaica. And uh, I think just like me, hopefully it gave, gave some, you know, all of you uh, joining us today enjoyed playing the game with us. And hopefully it gave you some good ideas uh, as to how you might be able to incorporate a game like this into your learning context. Uh, once again, I want to remind everyone, uh, especially our customers on Active Support Plan, that they are they may they're eligible to get this game, the Mind the Gold, for free, along with the other two Evolve Interactions, Rapid Check and Mind the Gold. So please do write to us if you haven't already availed them, and we'd be happy to share those with you. So moving on. We've just seen one exciting game in the webinar so far, but we have lots more in store for you in uh, coming up in the remainder of the hour. And what's I think we'll see many examples from our customers, and I think what's a better way to get us started than handing over to Nadine herself, our very valued customer and our special uh, games expert. And she will share with us some examples that she has created, and I must say created very creative, used, used a lot of creativity. And she's used them, developed them using Raptivity. Uh, but not only will she be sharing uh, the examples with us, but given her background in early childhood development as well as uh, her experience, she will also share with us her views on the significance of games as a, an effective learning tool. So over to you, Nadine. Hello? Hi, Janavi, can you hear me now? Yes, now we can. Thank you. That's great, thank you. And you can see my screen OK. Yes, I sure can, and I'm hoping everybody else can too. 
I have. So, well, good evening, everyone, and thank you for having me on this webinar. It's a privilege to join you and to share my knowledge with you. I am happy to show you uh, what I've prepared, but if you have any questions afterwards, feel free to write them in the comment box. I'll jump right in and basically start by saying that if you are at all involved in using technology or interactive media during the early childhood development phase, I would highly recommend you get your hands on this particular document. Um, it is a joint position statement by the National Association for the Education of Young Children as well as the Fred Rogers Center for Early Learning and Children's Media and they have done an independent study so they did not get any kind of a reward from any company for their findings, just an independent excellent study to give great tips on how to use media and technology, especially interactive media in education. So you can write down that link that's there on the screen at the moment and it'll take you to our Euroskills website where you can get a copy of this particular document. It's just brilliant. So jumping right into it, I'm going to give you some examples from this document by starting just to say um, what are the benefits of a good use of technology. Now there's generally this perception out there that, you, that um, screen time is bad for children and it's partly true but largely untrue. Partly true in the sense that passive screen time is definitely bad for young children but interactive screen time um, such as a good use of educational games is really beneficial. So some of the benefits would be that it can improve children's attitudes towards a variety of things. First of all, towards learning in general, because what better way to learn than through having fun? Second of all, it can also improve children's attitudes towards specific subject content. I've seen this a lot in my experience with children where a child would say, I can't do maths, I just suck at it, I, I just can't do it, I don't get it. And then I would say, okay, well, let's play a computer game and let's just have some fun on the computer. And I would put on a maths game for them and slowly but surely go to a higher difficulty level and generally the kids who say they can't do math still end up getting it right and after a short while you just go oh wow congrats look you're brilliant at maths and when they realize it at that point in time you can actually see the light switch go on in their mind where they realize they can do it so using games is a brilliant tool for improving attitudes towards specific contents and learning also, using interactive games is a fantastic way of getting children um, exposed to but also to develop a positive attitude towards different groups of people. Um, maybe if you're living in a country where there's only um, one specific culture, then for children to then get um, exposure to a different culture through the use of games is just a great way of um, improving their attitudes and minimizing stereotypes. Also, um, another benefit is that it can create opportunities to introduce developmentally appropriate topics. Sometimes certain topics are very difficult for either parents or teachers to introduce and again, technology and games, that combination is a great way of introducing it. Furthermore, it can encourage the development of communication and writing skills. Now again, many times people think that technology has a negative impact on communication and writing, but it doesn't have to be that way. If technology is used in the right way, research has actually shown that it can have a significantly positive effect on communication and writing skills. A great example of that would be children using Skype with family across the other side of the world. And then very importantly, and this is what I am particularly passionate about, is that research, independent research has shown that a good use of technology can have a directly positive impact on cognitive skills development. And by cognitive skills, I mean higher order thinking skills. 
such as you can see some of the examples there, problem solving, analysis, symbolizing, a variety of different skills. And these are basically the skills that um, help children to learn and to achieve academic success. So just by looking at the short list, I've only given a few example, examples because of time constraints, but just looking at the short list, I believe we can certainly see that there's huge benefits in using technology. Now, if we were looking at a, a, um, technology, then again, this research has shown that a good use of technology, the best use, is that which is interactive. So it demands an input from the learner, not just to sit and watch passively, but to actually be creative and be challenged and to interact with the technology. Also, it needs to be age and developmentally appropriate. That's vital. Technology should not just be used for the sake of using it. It must be appropriate for the level of the child. Also, it must be complementary to other means of learning. It shouldn't replace other means, but it definitely can enhance it in wonderful ways. Then it should be encouraging human interaction. And I find with Raptivity, many of the games you can actually use um, teams to use it. And I've even in the classroom with a class of 30 or 40 children, played games where you, from Raptivity where you can have the entire classroom participating in the same game. Again, it must be educationally sound. We've touched on that already. And interesting, many people forget, but it's vitally important to think who is your end target audience. And it must be in line with your end target market's value system. And then last but certainly not least, it must protect the child from any dangerous or exploitative situations. So this here is just a few examples from that document where you can see what a good use of technology should look like. Next, I want to jump into just a few instructional design pointers for you to see um, when you are using Raptivity specifically for um, the early childhood development phase. These are some pointers that you can take home. First of all, it's vitally important to be creative. Now, an example here from Raptivity, this is an area select, single selection, what the Raptivity would look like the, in the pack when you buy it. And here's an example or two examples just of using the same, exact same Raptivity, but applying color and creativity to it, and immediately the child's attention is drawn to it. And because it's so colorful and fun and creative, they tend to be um, just, keep, it keeps their attention for a much longer time. Next, it's vitally important to maximize pictures and color. Now, here's a good example of a drag and drop image on image raptivity, but, and they've used good pictures already, but you can maximize it. You can use the entire field with as many pictures as you possibly can, and for young children, that is a big drawing mechanism. Also, movement grabs interest. Now, there's a few activities. I'll show you two examples at this point where there's great movement. And I've seen especially with young boys, as soon as there's movement in the game, they are glued to it. So although this is a good example, um, this activity, again, you can apply pictures to it and take it from an adult activity to an activity for young children using the exact same layout of a activity that someone wouldn't typically deem suitable for children. But just by using colors and pictures, voila, there you have it. Another um, movement-based activity is this scenario-based classification. And again, this is an example of what it would look like for adult learning. But again, for childhood learning, just by adding some colors, some fun pictures, a vortex, different things like that, playing around with the look and feel of it, it becomes suitable for children and it keeps and draws their attention. 
Next also, when looking at the ECD phase, it's quite important to incorporate cartoons and humor. Now, in this Raptivity, this is their graphic choice multiple selection, they've made fantastic use of photographs. And photographs are perfect for young children, but don't forget the power of cartoons and humor. Young kids are just drawn to it. And here are just two examples of um, some cartoon and humor that's used, but for a different type of Raptivity, we've seen this single selection area select before, but again just adding cartoons and humor to it and the children are glued to it. Very important to think out of the box. Now this is a Raptivity labeling exercise and typically that is what as adults what we would immediately do when we see a labeling exercise is label an example like that. But labeling can also be done in this kind of a way um, and layout where you, um, it's not specifically linked with lines. But also this labeling exercise doesn't have to be used for labeling at all. It can be used for a sequencing activity in this example where you have the cow, the milk jug and the truck that um, transports the milk and the children need to decide in what order did it happen. A simple labeling exercise but now used for sequencing. Another out of the box one is a area select mul multiple selections. Now in the Raptivity example that it comes in, it comes as a standard one where you have multiple choices in the table. Now this is an example of doing exactly the same thing but for younger learners. Or again, you can do something completely different. In this particular one at the bottom, you can see it's not in a tabular format anymore, but instead the children just need to now classify and suddenly it becomes a classification activity where they need to choose the living things and the appropriate pictures. The next one is very important. The game should be entertaining but also educational and I'm sure many of you have heard of the word edutainment and this is a very good example of edutainment where those two factors are combined. Now Raptivity has some wonderful examples of um, books but again to make it suitable for young children and looking at education as well as entertainment. Now my educational um, from an educational point of view for this particular book, it's simple sub subtraction for young children. But I'm also making it entertaining. I'm showing the children that yes, there were three apples and there are now only two lef one left with two very fat worms who've had a great time munching on the different apples. So just combining education and entertainment, great way for keeping children's attention and making sure they learn. Or a different example of using beautiful images and photographs, but still making sure there's something educational in there. And then also another very important thing when looking at young children and games, small rewards is vital. It keeps them interested and this can happen in a variety of ways. You can have levels. In this, this is a particular example from our program Hero Skills where they've got a learning area and then they progress up the ladder to easy, medium and hard activities. And just by introducing levels, there's a, the reward of achievement that the child can move up a level and that also keeps them motivated. Then also to show achievement is a great way of having small rewards just by using smiley faces or whichever visual tactic for the children to be able to see their progress. Another great way is giving certificates and again Raptivity has a certificate interaction that you can basically make it suitable from adult learning all the way down to childhood learning and you can just have great fun making it appropriate for whatever age group you are working with. And then last but not least, bonus games. Kids love bonus games and when they know that there's something hidden that they'll only be able to open up once they've stuck at it and gone through all the hard work, 
there will be a bonus for them, then again, you have highly motivated young kids. And then, for me, the most important thing when it comes to instructional design is it should be fun for the children. Now, my favorite quote is by Natalia Ginsberg, and she said, what we must remember above all in the education of our children is that their love of life should never weaken. And what better way to, to make sure that kids love life and love learning than by combining games with learning. And we're living in such a privileged time where we can use technology to assist us in that task. So um, next I would like to just show you a few live examples from our program just so that you can get a bit more of a um, perspective of what it looks like live. So first of all I'll go into the literacy side, into the theme story memory. Now again this is the levels which is great for rewards. The, and the children would have in show me read or listened to a story about the donkey family's trip to the city they spent a day in the city. And now when you go into this particular game to catch them faster activity, you can now take a comprehension test but just turn it into something really fun. And the question is catch only the food that the donkey family had for lunch while in the city. So there were three of them, mother donkey, father donkey, and baby donkey. Now I'm trying to remember, I think father donkey had a burger, so catching that one, I hope that was right. Mother donkey had soup, and baby donkey had milk. Ooh, it's quite, ah, as you can see, it goes quite fast. And there we go, there's my feedback, that's right, you caught all the right food. Or a different example that I can show you would be in the, sorry I just need to minimize that for a second, would be in the numeracy one, going into time, date and sequence, into an easy level, try me, and let's take a time word problem. Now often you will see that children hate time word problems or any word problems in maths. But by introducing just a fun picture, something colorful, um, you will soon see that they are quite interested in um, doing the word problem. So this one, John watched TV for an hour. He finished at 3 o'clock. What time did he start? Finished at 4, so started at 3. That's right, and they can move on. One final feature I want to show you about reactivity, and this is what I really love about it, is if you are in a country where there's multiple languages, like here in South Africa we have 11 national languages. Reactivity is a phenomenal tool to use um, different languages to achieve the same thing. So I'll show you the exact same game in um, story memory, where we had the donkey's trip to the city just so you can see what reactivity might look like in a different language. And this time the question is, um, what vehicles did they see in the city? And you can choose a motor car and, and a bus. You get the idea, I'm not going to put you through this one in a language we don't understand. But again, just showing you one very final one in numeracy just to show you the flexibility of reactivity where again I can now have the same game but in a different language. And I will finish on this particular example here, just show you what is the time on this clock and the child can choose one o'clock. So those are my examples. Um, I hope that you have have enjoyed it and I hope you found it insightful. If you have any questions later on, um, I will still be here and I'll be more than happy to take your calls, um, your questions. But I believe Janavi and Jamaica, over to you now.
Well, I think while Jonavi is getting her screen shared with us, there, Nadine, I would just like to thank you so much for those examples. That was fantastic. That's certainly a lot of uh, food for thought and a lot of ways of thinking outside the box. I really appreciated that. Sure, you're welcome. That was, that was some uh, technical idea. difficulty there. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. We have <laughs> <Okay>. you back. <laughs> Thanks. And can you see my screen? Because I yes, got some sure error can. message. Okay. So uh, th actually I was speaking, I didn't even realize there was some audio issues. <laughs> so I, th I was thanking, thank you Nadine for those great examples like Jamaica said. And I think if there was one takeaway uh, that I got from this is a little bit of creativity and like you said, thinking outside the box. Can, you can literally uh, transform, uh, transform your a simple activity into a game that fits your learning context. I mean, you showed some before and after sh screenshots and you couldn't even tell they were the same. So thank you for sharing that. And I also just want to uh, agree on that uh, the, the point that you brought up about the positive impact on cognitive skills. Uh, just yesterday, we, uh, I came across a blog on onlineuniversities.com and there are some great examples of, they've just picked some uh, 18 universities uh, where they are incorporating games as a serious learning tool uh, at the graduate level program. So business program, medical, right from you know, a game about pricing strategies to leadership skills to medical terminology and medical skills. So again, I think uh, that's true. And uh, that said, I want to, I also think that some of the pointers that uh, Nadine shared with us today, those, even though they were in the context of early childhood development, I think those concepts remain the same and they can be easily extended to adult learning as well. So thanks again, Nadine, um, great examples. And we will move on to look at some more great uh, samples from our, our other customers. And first off, we have our customer in UK. And by the way, uh, just some, for some of you who don't know, Nadine has joined us from um, all the way from South Africa. So this is truly a global setting. We have the next example coming from UK. Carol Oliver has uh, graciously agreed to share her examples on this webinar with us. So we will go right in. And this is her website where she has hosted many different tests. Uh, it's called Learning Solutions uh, website by Carol Oliver. And it has many questions, um, many games that she has incorporated in the testing and the quizzes on her website. So let's quickly take a look at a couple of them. Uh, here's one of my favorites. It's the familiar family feud <laughs> type of game where there are multiple levels and the objective is you want to clear the board of course but if not at least before your three strikes are over you want to get the maximum cumulative maximum score so let's say what's what are the popular sports I know this is one there we go we got the highest and obviously let's let's pick a random uh, I don't know curling maybe maybe that's not there uh, and obviously that isn't there, so one strike, I have two more, and I can keep going this way. Football. And cricket, since there are some folks from <laughs> South Africa and India joined us here, so. So I, I'm sure you get the idea. Once this game board is cleared, you can move to the next, lef, uh, next level or I can pass uh, a question and move on to the next. The whole, pers uh, the whole point is to get the maximum cumulative scores across the different uh, questions. So we can move on and maybe let's go to this. Uh, this is uh, another game which I like, of uh, who wants to be, uh, or are you smarter than the fifth grader game? Uh, if For those who are familiar, I think it's a little bit of a strategy game because you have to pick the categories and, you know, you want to be strategic because you can't get out of that category till you've finished it. So you want to go with the ones you know for very well. So I'm going to steer clear from math and go into science maybe. And who had the... You know, so there's questions. As you can see, there I have the option to pass or switch a question, so I won't get uh, points for those, even though I attempt them. So it's kind of helplines right there. Um, I submit. I got it right. 
I can continue to the next question and only after I finish a category, the science category, I can move on to the next. So there's some strategic choices to be made here. Who discovered penicillin, submit, continue. And I can switch if I'm not sure and still attempt it without uh, getting points for it. So, so I, I'm sure you get the idea. Um, you know, we can, we can keep going, but in interest of time, um, this, uh, we will move on to the next example here. Again, I just want to point out that all the scoring and the timing that you see that can be, score, that can be sent as SCORM uh, variables, so you can even do the tracking. So the score box that you see at the bottom right, I can send, uh, definitely track it in my LMS. So here's, this is a, a kind of mimicking the deal, no deal game. So I have, if for those that are familiar, you're presented with a box, and in this case, the box has a question. And here's, this, this game is about South, uh, this is about African uh, animals, actually. Uh, so how, can, how fast can an elephant charge? Hmm. I'm, I'm just going to guess 25. And I like this game. So each game is so different, uh, as you saw the earlier two. In this case, there's this element of trade-off. So if you're not sure, you'll get an offer to settle for a lower score. So say I picked 25 and I said I'm not sure. Now, see here on the top right, I have 20 seconds to decide if I want to settle for a lower score or take my chances and try for the bigger score. So I'm just going to say take offer, and I got three points, but I was correct, so if I'd left it, I would have probably gotten more. So it's, it's, it's that trade-off of, you know, if you're sure, you get more points. If you're not, you can settle for less and so on. So, oh, do elephants sneeze? <laughs> I don't know the answer to that. Uh, anybody? Anybody have any help for me? They can, I'm going to say only. That's what I would say. Jonathan. Nadine says yes. So <laughs> Nadine okay, saying well. yes. And she, she probably knows this. So <laughs> I'm going to say yes. And I'm sure. Yes, Nadine, you're right. So thank you for helping. So that's that's fantastic. So so as you can see, you get this game. Uh, you get the idea. When I leave the game or when the game ends, I can always uh, check my answer against the correct answer. And it shows me all the questions. There's the score also at the top right. So moving on, I think we can go over to our next example, which is from the Phillips Learning Center. And Jamaica will share um, some, of, some examples from there with us. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, let's go through a few of these. So this is the Phillips um, Healthcare, and this is their online learning center. And what they do is they provide continuing medical and healthcare education. Um, online and they have over 90 different medical games that they've created and they've all been done in Raptivity. So this will be fantastic. We'll look at a couple. Um, we'll go ahead and start here with the anatomy and physiology. And again, you'll see the same templates that we may have seen in some other samples, but again for a very different audience. So this is a Jeopardy game. So as soon as we start it, we see the different topics. There's a timer. And as with all the Raptivity games, it's all customizable. So it will be your questions, your responses. And if I remember correctly, <laughs> I am definitely not an anatomy major, but gallbladder, I believe. <laughs> so we'll submit. And you see immediately that I get feedback. I got some points. My score is changing. Uh, so that's a nice, nice refresher game there. Another one we'll take a look at is... Where are we at here? In our nuclear medicine, excellent. Let's take a look at one of the letter games in Raptivity. And there's a variety of types of games, but we'll look at just a crossword puzzle here. And you can see we have our clues. It looks like a traditional crossword puzzle. But what I like about this, especially because, again, I'm certainly not a medical expert, you can see there on the solve, you can get some hints. You can solve maybe a letter. You're not sure what it starts with. You could solve by word, so the whole word will appear. Or you can also type in your answers. So here we see we're three down. It's the common bile duct is usually abbreviated. And I'm going to say it's CBD. I feel pretty good about that one. So you can even just type it in if you want. I would guess it. that too. To <laughs> <laughs> I feel good about guessing that yes. one. The other ones, I don't know. <laughs> so you can see there it's the correct answer as well. 
So again, there are a lot of different types of letter games in Raptivity, but this is just one of the more oh, popular and fun ones there with the crossword. Maybe we'll take a look at just one more. Maybe in the, what's next here? We can look at the, yes, perfect. We'll look at the Veni Puncture Procedure. And what's fantastic about this one is this is a sequencing exercise. And so we have this list of options or this, these lists um, that are in this procedure. And each step is associated with the color. And they're also listed across the bottom. So our goal is to put these steps in the correct order by moving the color. So you can see they're moving there. And the goal is to get it right on the first try. You can see that 100 point value there on the left. And if we don't get it, um, then we continue on. We get more tries, but the point value decreases. So the goal here being to get them all right on the first try. And also when you hover over the colored uh, dots at the bottom, it'll tell you what the steps are as well. So if you don't want to scroll through the legend on the right. And what's fantastic is once we put in our thought, we submit, it will tell us, unfortunately, we didn't get any of them right. If we had some right, on the right-hand side there, it would appear. So again, motivated to get it on the first try to get the maximum number of points. So this is one of the sequencing games in Raptivity. So hopefully that gave you a good, good idea there of some other ways that some of the templates are being used in different settings from our customers um, all over the world, as John Avi mentioned. OK, thanks. Uh, thanks, Jamaica. So to our audience, I think you've seen many different games so far and hopefully gotten some good ideas of incorporating something like this into your learning context as well. But now um, it's, it's your turn to play. That's right. Uh, you will get a chance to play a game that we've hosted online just for you. And the best part is there are going to be two winners, so we're going to give away Unfortunately, even though this is a who wants to be a millionaire type of a popular game that we have for you, we don't have million dollars to give away. <laughs> so don't get your hopes up. <laughs> yeah. So two winners, but they will be walking away with Amazon gift cards, though. So, you know, uh, let's get started. And Jamaica will show, uh, share with us, uh, you know, she'll launch the game for us. But I just wanted to quickly show you how it works. Uh, just like the original game, the game board looks very similar. You have four options uh, for the answers. You select the one that you want to select. If you're, if you're not sure, you have a couple of helplines like take away two in the bottom right. Uh, or you can also click on hint. That will give you a hint. So I'm going to say Saturn. And then to select it, you click on lock it. And then if it's right, you, you get to, uh, oh, that was Uranus, of course. <laughs> I didn't even, yeah, oh, the third largest planet in the solar system. So I can, uh, so it's similar. If, if I had gotten it right, I can go to the next question. Otherwise, it stops uh, right there. So where is Wimbledon played? Again, hint, 50-50. And it's correct. I can move on. You see the points. Uh, this changes, bar changes to green, and I can go to the next question. So, um, I guess, may the best player win, and Jamaica will give us the details of the game. Fantastic. Okay, thanks, Jonavi, for sharing that game. So we are all going to get to play this game now. So here are the parameters of the game. The website is listed here on the screen, and I think we can also get it to you in the chat box. I think it was just sent. So you'll want to go to that URL. Um, we do have quite a few of us, so the game might take just a second to launch, but it will come up. So. What you'll want to do is race your way to that million dollar point. So we're going to leave this game open for three minutes. And during those three minutes, you can restart the game as many times as you want to or need to. But here's the key to get those gift cards and to participate. Um, before the three minutes are up, you'll need to put in the chat box um, your uh, name and your score that you got. So the highest score and your name you got before the three minutes are up. And our panel of judges will be watching the scores. We'll be taking a look and we'll figure out who was first, who had the highest scores. 
and we'll announce the winners in just a little bit. So hopefully you have all made it to that URL and are on your way racing. So we will start our time and we'll let you know when the time is, is getting close to running out so you can make sure to get your score submitted. And like a game show, Jamaica, I'll give the one minute <laughs> warning or <laughs> <Very> something. <good. laughs> Excellent. And don't forget, as Jonavi said there, um, once you make your selection, you'll just use that locket icon in the lower left. And if you do get stuck, you do have your hints in the lower right. So hopefully everyone is has their trivia. And I think there's a few math questions in there as well. So. Hopefully everyone is <laughs> feeling sharp today. Yes, it says it's an IQ test. <laughs> Not oh quite, but because there's spelling <laughs> in there too. So. Maybe it's good I'm just observing today, I, not participating. I, I, that's what I was thinking. And I was glad earlier that the, the mind the goal doesn't track how many rocks you got just like that. I'm glad yes, no, <laughs> we're not uh, competing here. <laughs> no, that's good. So... I think, gosh, are we a minute in? Is that right? We are exactly a minute in, and we have a little short of two minutes to go. Uh, no good. answers yet, but we are watching. The, uh, people, <laughs> and like you were saying, you can restart as many times as you like during those three minutes, but before the three minutes are up, uh, send us your max score that you got. Very good. And while that's going... Um, Genevieve, we can type it into the chat box, but we had a couple questions if you could restate the blog that you mentioned you had come across yesterday. So maybe we can put that in the, the oh, chat box absolutely. if you know that I, or just re-mention it. I saw that question come up a few it's, times. It's on the, uh, the blog uh, the, on the games used for graduate schools. Okay, very good, and we'll it's, definitely it's for, make that. It's, and I will paste, I need to copy it, it's a long URL, but I will do that while we're still waiting. Uh, okay. it's, it's on, if you go to onlineuniversities.com forward slash blog, um, that's, you'll see, an, you'll see a post uh, from yesterday which says 18 graduate programs embracing games. And there's some great examples there and you can click on them and read more about each of those. So there's Wharton School of Business, there's Harvard Medical School, and there's many other online schools as well that are listed on there. So I will type that up right here. Excellent. And while you're doing that, I see that we're getting some we're getting scores. point values and some names, so that's <laughs> excellent. That so is congratulations good. to those. The high scorers, are. right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at that. Very good. No, we're seeing quite a few roll-ins, so maybe this is... <laughs> Very good. All right. So what okay, we'll do so is, we are on the time. So we have a. So we have a. We are a exactly at three minutes. Okay. So, so maybe we'll give a. The time is up, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So we'll maybe just since we didn't announce it, let's give another. Oh gosh, I don't seconds. know. Yeah. Ten twenty seconds to pop your name in because I don't want anyone to miss just because. <laughs> we are seeing many millionaires. So if. <laughs> <laughs> if there's if there's a tie, we'll pick the two that answer that got there first. How about that? That came in first. Yes, I think that's excellent. Okay, so I think we'll let people type in for the next one. I don't know. Should we just say okay, like ten more seconds? Yeah, yeah. ten. We'll do a, a little countdown there. I would say five okay. more seconds. And time's up. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you, everyone, for your participation. That was excellent. So what we'll do is, um, like I said, we'll look, and if there is a tie, we'll take the first um, two that came in. Uh, it's time stamped when it came in, so we'll make sure to take a look at that. So in the meantime, let's go ahead and share just a few more things with you here. Um, we have a really great new page up on our website, um, and it's listed there at the bottom, uh, raptivity.com, and it's the game samples. So what we've done is we've put all of the games in Raptivity, um, all 36 games that we have, we have them all corralled or harnessed together in one location. So you can see all of the games from all of the packs in one uh, concise area. So that's a new page up on our website. So that will definitely um, 
be something nice to look at. And as with all of our samples, they are live working samples, so when you go there later on, you can choose any of those samples to, to take a look at and try out. And again, we'll make that link available to everyone um, in our webinar follow-up. So we also have some exciting news to share with everyone here. Um, as of today, all Raptivity games, all 36 of them, now also support HTML5 output. And that's a true statement because today our Games Turbo Pack has been upgraded and re-released with HTML5 output. So what that means for the big picture of Raptivity is that we now have over 100 interactive templates that can be viewed on iPads and iPhones. Um, and again, all 36 games are that way as well as the over 100 other templates. So we're really excited about that achievement and, and we're sure that that will benefit some of you as well who are using the iPads and iPhones for your end users. And briefly here, we'll just let you know that also just announced up on our website, um, on our store, we've just announced our special year end offers, so they'll be valid now through the end of the year. And the one I'd like to draw your attention to here real quick is the one in the center of the screen, the pack bundle. So this is great, especially since we're talking about games today. Um, you can choose the essential pack and then any four add-on packs. So you can get all of the packs that have the game templates that we've looked at. So that's a great place to start. And we also have some other uh, Oh, year in promotions there, and I would recommend going to the website. Uh, you'll you'll see all the promotions there. You can write to us if you have any questions. We'll give you the specifics about them. So that is also what we'd like to share with you. And I think so. We are just about here at the end of what we wanted to share with everyone. And. Real quick, just before we announce our winners, um, just wanted to thank everyone for your participation, um, for your enthusiastic participation in our game, for your help with our games when Jonavi and I were doing our math and science questions there. Um, we also want to send a special thank you to Nadine for your time, your expertise, and also the great suggestions that you uh, gave on thinking outside of the box when we're creating games. So, and to make her, I've just sent you the winner names. Perfect. That's what I was just going to ask. Okay, so here we are. So we need a drum roll of some sort. So, okay, our winners of our Amazon gift work. card. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> so we have Laura Brinkman, and our second winner is William Weaver. So congratulations to you two. You zipped your way to the top quicker than anyone else. Very nice. So we will get in touch again. Laura Brinkman and William Weaver, you are the recipients of the Amazon gift card. So we'll get in touch with you to arrange to get those to you. So I know we are just about here at the end of our time. So if you do have questions, feel free to chat them to us. Um, and if you do have to, to leave, we understand. Uh, again, we will make a document with your questions and our answers and make that available to everyone as well. Um, and up on the screen again is our contact information. So if you'd like more Raptivity information, info at Raptivity, you can download a trial of Raptivity, check out the samples, um, you know, write to us there if you need any help finding the links. Um, for hero skills queries or for more information from Nadine, her contact information is there as well, Nadine at heroskills.com. So those are the best ways to get in touch with us. Um, so let's go ahead again. I know we're close to our time here, but if there's some questions that we want to take, let's let me zip through those real quick. Excellent. Oh, good, William. I'm glad you're still on and you heard that you're the winner. Excellent. And so I one believe... question we can take to make as they said, where is the content, uh, where does the content reside for these questions? So that's a good question we could take. For these, uh, for the games, you know, where do all the questions reside? 
Oh, as far as how you populate them? Yes, exactly. So. Oh, that's a great question. So is, uh, so the customization question? Or maybe I'm just not yes. seeing the yeah, question. So I think, um, if you want to answer it, I'm sorry. So, I'm just not no, seeing no, 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 that's fine. So one of the questions is how do you, how are the, you know, the content that supports the questions, where is it posed in the game? So it's, it's a very simple uh, WYSIWYG kind of an editor where you would just, you know, it's a template based. So you just provide your questions, your answers, the scoring inside of a template. It'll tell you, okay, you know, what score do you want for this question? So it's, it's really simple. Uh, it also allows, we, there's a feature in Raptivity to import and export uh, questions and also a question bank. So there's many different ways you can uh, add questions to your, uh, to your game. And another question is, can these be plugged into an LMS and make it SCORM compliant? Absolutely. Um, these, these are, you know, uh, all Raptivity interactions are SCORM compliant, which means you can pass the scores and other information to your LMS. We have a question um, for Nadine, if you're still on the line. The question is, when you were showing the levels interaction, um, do you know which template that you used to create that? Um, the, if you're talking about the levels in the program, the Hero Skills program, then that is not a reactivity. Most of the activities have, or many of them, um, have uh, like levels like the million dollar one where you can put your own increasing difficulty level in it, but the particular purple screen with the euros on that was within our own program, um, just a custom level screen. I hope that answers the question. Oh, I think it does. Thank you. Very good. I'm still skimming here for some other ones. We had such great responses here to our... And there's one opposite type of a question. One says, do you, can you do the scoring only if you're on an LMS? Um, that's a good question. So you don't have to have an LMS to play these games. You can just put them as fun exercises. Uh, you don't have to track the scores. Also, if you want to do it inside of a web page without necessarily using an LMS, you can do that through JavaScript also. So Raptivity does support JavaScript, and uh, you'll have to create a wrapper around it in, um, HDR, in your web page, but it's, it's, it's possible to do it without LMS, absolutely. Excellent. And I saw a question in here about um, how, well, the question is, can a novice add these things to, and it mentions a specific tool. Um, and to answer that question, I would say yes, um, but we also have a fantastic integration guide that will take you step by step um, also in text, and we also have some screenshots that will help guide you step by step. So we can definitely make that resource available as well for the integration. And I think there's one more question for Nadine. Uh, Nadine, the article that you shared uh, on, on the games at the very beginning of your presentation, if you can share the URL in the chat box, that would be great. Sure. I'll put it in now. Sure. Fantastic. Maybe while she's doing that, just time for one more question before we wrap up, Jamaica? Sure. Let's see here. Oh, maybe just a, a quick one here. You talked about the tracking, John. Have you maybe just quickly mentioning what else um, Raptivity tracks besides just the score? Does it track any of the other um, components of so the, the games yeah, and actions? So, the, so one thing, so obviously the score, the completion status, um, also the time spent on, on the interaction, as well as if there are question and answer type of games, uh, games or interactions, I should say, because uh, there's non-games interactions to interactivity. So uh, all the, wherever there's a question answer flavor, it'll also pass, you're, you're able to pass the question and answers as well. Fantastic. Thank you. And I think Nadine just sent the link, and I think I forwarded it on there to the whole audience. So hopefully everyone is seeing the link to the article. Um, and if for some reason you're not seeing it, we'll definitely make that available in the, the follow-up as well. Um, so again, I think we're, 
we're at the end here of our time, so uh, we just want to again thank you so much for being a part of our webinar today, for your participation, for your feedback, for your questions, um, and also your interaction through the entire thing. That's that's fantastic. Again, we want to thank uh, Nadine for her expertise and her her joining us. Um, and on all of our behalfs, Nadine, Jonavi, and myself, it's really been our privilege to host our game show webinar. So on behalf of all of us, we want to thank you so much and, and wish you the, the best for the rest of your day. Yes, thank you, Nadine, and thank you all for joining us. Thank you, everyone, and have a great day. Mm, thanks, Nadine.